Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're here in the baby barn again because today I want to talk about where you should put your incubators and how you should care for your incubators. And forgive me, I'm just moving my tray. There we go. Sorry about that. So where to put your incubators? Well, you want to pick a place that is out of direct sunlight and definitely away from any drafts. So what I have here, this is an empty incubator getting ready to load. But I have my incubators down here on a shelf. So this incubator has quail eggs. That incubator has chicken eggs. And this incubator has babies. Let's just see if we can get a better look at these babies. Hi, guys. Hey. Hey. There we go. Babies. <laughs> so this has baby quail. Three baby quail right now. We only had a couple of eggs. So... That's how I have my incubators. Sorry, there we go. So they are out of direct sunlight. And yes, you might have noticed that there's actually a door here. This is a shed. Okay, we're in a shed on the property. There's a door and there's a window. Okay, so I am out of direct sunlight because these windows are on the north side of the shed. Okay, so sun never actually shines directly in here. But it gets the, it still gets light, but it doesn't get direct sunlight. So you want to have your incubators out of direct sunlight, which is why I can have them against this particular wall. Okay. Keep it away from any heating or air conditioning elements or vents. There's no heating or air conditioning vents in here, so I don't have to worry about that. Yes, there is an open window. On windy days, if the wind is coming from that particular direction, I shut the window and I shut the big door so that we don't get any drafts. You do want your incubators away from drafts. Don't put your incubator outside, okay? It needs to be, most incubators need to be around room temp, okay? These ones can handle a little more flexibility in temperature. I've had these in rooms as cold as about 10 degrees Celsius. So they can handle a little bit more flexibility because they're a higher priced incubator. But the less expensive your incubator is, the less wiggle room it has. So if you have a cheaper incubator, you need to make sure you have a stable room temp. So try to keep your incubators in an area that is roughly room temperature most of the time. Okay, so out of direct sunlight, away from drafts, and you want to have them in a room temp room. You don't want it too hot, you don't want it too cold. A lot of incubators can be a little bit temperamental. Okay, so how to clean your incubator. Okay, it does need to be cleaned between hatches. Okay, you don't want to transfer bacteria from one incubator to another incubator. So you do want to clean. Now you want to follow your manufacturer's directions for best results, okay? Because they should have directions for how to clean it. Now I have a plastic incubator. I do not use styrofoam incubator incubators. I find it's very difficult to properly clean styrofoam because the stuff that cleans it best also breaks it down. So I don't like styrofoam incubators. It's possible to clean them, but it's harder. I like using plastic. Either way, no matter what you're using, follow your manufacturer's directions for best practices. Okay? If you're like most of us, you're going to put your incubators away in the fall. Okay? When you put it away, clean it completely. But in between, you can do less of a clean. Okay? So... In between each hatch, I take these trays out, I give them a quick rinse, I dry them off, and uh, stick them back, okay? There we go, come on, there we go. I take the trays out, rinse them off, stick them back. I wipe out the bottom of the incubator, so this is gonna have eggs in it tomorrow. Okay, it's gonna have eggs tomorrow. So what's going to happen is I'm going to um, clean it out tomorrow and it'll be good. It'll be fantastic. I'll wipe it down. You don't need to do a thorough clean until the end of the season. End of the season, everything gets disassembled, put in my sink, and I just wash the heck out of it. Okay? So in between hatches, I wipe it down. At the end of the season, I wash the heck out of it. Okay, your tops. Most incubators will have a top that's something like this. They're not that difficult to clean, really. In between hatches, I just take compressed air, or I actually have a little blower, and I just blow out 
the uh, feathers and dust out of the motor area. At the end of the season, I take all these screws out, I pull it apart, and I give it a deep clean. So there's a difference between cleaning it between each hatch and cleaning it at the end of the season. End of season, deep, deep clean. You want everything thoroughly clean and dry before you put it away for the winter. So for the most part, when you start up your incubator, during each hatch, you want to let it run for each uh, about eight hours before you add your eggs. It needs to come to the correct temperature. Measure your temperature. Okay, we're going to talk about temperature uh, in the next video. This is going to be a real quick video, but just measure your temperature before you put your eggs in if you're at all unsure. Okay, you want your eggs to develop properly. Make sure your incubator is maintaining correct temperature and humidity before you add your eggs. Because if it's too cold when you put them in, their development will be compromised. So that's about it for taking care of your incubator and where to put it. Uh, next video, we will talk in depth about temperature and why it's so important. That's about it for us today at Anderson Acres. We'll see you tomorrow.